Hi guys, I'm Paddy from windowanddoorparts.ie and in this video I'm going to show you how to check a window for drafts. Now, during the winter months, this is the most common problem I'm called out to fix. Normally I'm just shown to a window and told that this window is drafty. So it's up to me to check the window and find out where the draft is coming from. So this is the window I'm going to be checking for drafts. In this case, the entire window is one opening sash. Your windows will probably have more than one opening section and possibly a fixed section as well. Follow the same procedure for each opening section. In the vast majority of cases, if there's a draft coming through a window, it will be from one of the opening sections of the window. Here's a helpful tip. Open your window a fraction and take a few seconds to take in the street noise. Now close the window. A well sealed window will cut out the majority of street noise when closed. If you close your window and you can still hear street noise clearly, your window is not sealing correctly. Anywhere you can clearly hear street noise, you will have a draft. Another helpful tip, if you're finding it difficult to pinpoint the location of a draft in your window, use a cigarette lighter. Hold the flame an inch or two away from the window. Hold the lighter still at various places around the window. Pay attention to the flame. If the flame is still, there is no draft. If the flame flickers, there is a draft. The very first thing I check every single time are the window hinges. Broken window hinges are the number one reason for drafts coming through a window. Broken window hinges can be seen as a gap between the sash and the window frame. Now this gap can be as small as one or two millimeters, but gets bigger and bigger over time. To check your hinges, simply open and close the sash a few times. It should open and close smoothly and close tightly against the frame seal. Push against the sash with your other hand as it closes. The hinge should close the sash tightly even with you pushing against it. This hinge is perfect. Do the same for the other hinge. If your hinges don't close tightly like this, you will need to replace the hinges. This is an example of what the gap from a broken window hinge will look like. There is a link below in the description for my video on how to replace the hinges on a UPVC window. Staying on the hinge side of the window, check the middle of the sash. On nearly all windows, there will be a set of interlocking plastic blocks or wedges. One half will be screwed to the sash, the other half will be screwed to the frame. When the sash closes, the two blocks lock against each other and pull the sash tight in the middle of the window. The longer the window, the more important these blocks are, as there will be a greater likelihood of the window material flexing. To test to see if these interlocking blocks are doing their job, simply push against the middle of the sash when it's closed. I'm going to remove one block to show you what it looks like if these blocks are missing or not closing tightly enough. You can see here the gap when I push against the sash. With these blocks missing or not making proper contact with each other, the sash can develop a bow in the midpoint, letting a draft come through. A strong wind could also push past the seal at this point.
Now I'm going to refit the block I removed and show you what it should look like when I press against it. This might sound really obvious, but if the sash isn't closing squarely in the window frame, it can lead to a draft. Now this is more so an issue with side hung sashes, as the sash can droop down, leaving a gap along the top. A good guide is to use the line of the weld in the sash. The weld of the sash should ideally line up with the corner of the window frame. Use a pencil to mark where the sash meets the window frame. In this case, it is perfect. The sash has good cover behind the frame rebate on each side. This is a picture of a window I had to repair recently. The sash had dropped so much you could clearly see daylight through the gap. Also, this sash had dropped down so far that the window spag lock was barely locking into the keeps on the frame. Next check how tightly the sash closes on the lock side of the window. The vast majority of windows nowadays use window spag locks, which are multi-point locks that are recessed into the sash. The window spag lock has circular roller locks that lock into metal receivers or keeps in the window frame. These circular rollers can be adjusted to close the window tighter or loosen it. Insert the correct sized Allen key into the roller. Turning one direction will tighten and the other direction will loosen. Older windows will use Coxburgh window handles and will close over plastic wedges fitted to the window frame. To test how tightly the window is closed, simply open and close the window handle a few times. Pay attention to the seal as you close the window handle. You want the sash to touch the seal and compress against it along the whole length of the lock side. Push against the sash along the handle side. Check to see if there's any give when you push against it. As you can see here, this lock is perfect. No give whatsoever. On the majority of windows, especially UPVC windows, there will be two seals. One on the window frame around each opening and one on the sash itself. Most people think that their seals are shrinking when in fact the majority of the time it's broken window hinges. Open the sash and do a quick visual inspection of the seal the whole way around. The seals on this window are perfect. On older UPVC and aluminium windows, glazing seals were used to hold the glass or double glazing in the window. These seals can shrink back, leaving a gap between the sash and the glazing. This is an example of a window with shrunken glazing seals. Also, the hinges are broken. This is the same window after the seals and the hinges have been replaced. Check around each section of glazing in your windows for shrinkage. The last things to check are the plastering around the window and the fit of the window board. Check the plaster on the outside of the window as well as the inside if you can. Granted, this is easier said than done, especially in apartments. A draft can enter through a crack or a gap in the external plaster around the window and travel through to the inside. A draft can also enter around a meter box or another window, travel along the wall cavity and then in around a different window. We can see here there are a few small gaps where a draft could come in. Drafts can also enter through the gaps around the window boards. You can see here there is a gap of around 3 to 4 millimeters. This gap would be more than enough for a draft to come through. 
Fill any cracks or gaps in the internal plaster and window boards with filler, painter's caulk or silicone. Use silicone on the exterior of the window. Do this on every window in your home. This will ensure no drafts can enter around the windows. Also check under the window board where it meets the wall. On this window board there are no gaps. So that's it folks, that's how I check a window for drafts. Now hopefully you found this video useful and will help keep you and your home warm this winter. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.